Atez Diouf is him. With two goals and what arguably should have been a third, Diouf's brace carried Lexington to a hard-fought draw against Northern Colorado Hailstorm. Lexington currently sits next to last in the USL League One, so any points that they can get are certainly welcome. However, it wasn't all pretty for Lexington, as many of the issues that I mentioned in my last video were in full display. They still have many of the same defensive vulnerabilities which costed them both of their goals in this game. However, their offense is starting to show promising signs, as this is the second time this season that Lexington has scored multiple goals. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. If you didn't, feel free to let me know why down in the comments. I'm still new to YouTube and I'd take any feedback that you may have. Also, let me know if there's any game or team you'd like for me to analyze next. From the very beginning of the game, Lexington's defensive problems were on full display. Lexington was still playing very aggressively with their wingbacks, pushing both wingbacks up the flanks when Lexington was in possession of the ball. However, this quickly backfired when, just four minutes into the game, Northern Colorado was able to win the ball in Lexington's area, hit the quick switch into the area vacated by Lexington's near side wingback who had pushed 20 yards up the field and find the back of the net. Remember in that last video when I talked about the risks you run when you push your wingbacks up that aggressively? Yeah, this is exactly that. With your wingbacks so far up the field, you have no one in those wide areas in transition when you lose the ball. Thus, if the opponent quickly switches the ball after winning it, Lexington's in deep trouble. Here's another example. Even though, in this case, one of Lexington's center mids dropped back to cover for the progressing wingback, when Lexington loses the ball, they don't have the defensive shape to defend against the immediate through pass. That's the current USL League One Golden Boot frontrunner running straight at your goalkeeper. And Lexington's so lucky that they didn't concede another one here. If you really want to push your wingbacks up the field like that, then there are a few solutions to this defensive vulnerability. First, as I just mentioned, you can drop a center mid or a winger back into that space, forming a back three. Not only can this help bring balance to your formation and stability to your defense, it can also get your pivots on the ball and open new passing angles and options for your buildup, which is something that we'll talk about later on in the video with Lexington's first goal. But as I just showed in that previous clip, it's not always perfect. Another thing that you can do is have your team apply immediate hard pressure on the ball when possession is lost. This is a tactic known as counter-pressing, which is more notably applied by Liverpool's manager Jurgen Klopp. While there are offensive tactical considerations that can be made if you want to go down this route, like how to best position players so that when you lose the ball you have a more effective press, the general principle is to have a whole team press immediately after you lose the ball. It can be effective because often, the team that just won possession is not in proper offensive shape and they need to take some time to find where their teammates are. If you can capitalize on the confusion and the poor shape, you can easily win the ball back. And in these cases with Lexington, you don't even necessarily need to win the ball back either as long as you've just applied enough pressure to prevent that switch pass out wide or that immediate through pass. That's good enough. Now looking back at Northern Colorado's first goal, Lexington has three players around the ball when they lost it. But if they just put in a little more effort to press the two Hailstorm players and they didn't let them get through that easily, it doesn't matter how open the Hailstorm winger is if they can't get him the ball. Obviously, you'd prefer that you don't have a man running in space directly at your goal. So if you really want to push both wingbacks up, a combination of dropping men back as well as counter pressing could be used. However, in general, I think Lexington should stay away from pushing both wingbacks up the field at any point in the game because it just opens too much space for the opposition to attack. A third way to address this, which is what Lexington has started to kind of do later in the game, is to be a bit more conservative and only push one wingback up the field. Then, the rest of the backline kind of rotates over and forms a bit of a back three. I think this is generally the best solution to this problem, as you still have defensive balance while not dragging a center mid back to cover. And Lexington with their two center mids, who are often going up against teams playing with three center mids, can't afford to only have one man in the middle. This improved defensive stability showed in later stages of the game, as although it still wasn't perfect, Lexington was more equipped to handle Northern Colorado's counters and transitions. Lexington has been struggling with this all year, but it's just something that was highlighted in this game. There are some other problems defensively for Lexington as well, but I'll just briefly touch on them here because I've talked about them extensively already in my previous videos. Although sometimes a little better, Lexington still often has too large of a gap between its midfield line and defensive line, which allows opposing forwards or attacking players to receive the ball in these areas and directly attack your back line. Additionally, along the same vein, Lexington is still pushed so far up that their center backs are being forced to step up to win a lot of goal kicks and keeper clearances. 
While Lexington center back Kalen Fox did a much better job this game winning these balls, it's still a dangerous position to be in, as if you aren't winning these balls and the other team has runners going for that second ball, like Chattanooga did a few weeks back, then you could be in some real danger. Northern Colorado didn't really capitalize on these Lexington weaknesses, so if you want to hear more about them, check out my last videos analyzing Lexington's matches against the Chattanooga Red Wolves and the South Georgia Tormenta FC. Also, I just want to say that Lexington's set piece defense, particularly corner kicks, has been awful all season. It's not that the other team scores directly off a header from the corner, but it's that there have been way too many times where the ball ends up bouncing a few times right in front of Lexington's goal before the opposition taps it in. This is elementary stuff, but you really can't be letting the ball bounce in your own box like that. Okay, enough about defense. I want to spend some time and talk about Lexington's offense in this game. Again, this is Lexington's second time ever scoring multiple goals in a game, and they're starting to show some promise offensively. Yes, the man of the match and the person everyone will be talking about is Atez Diouf, whose brace kept Lexington in the game. If you look at the first goal, it highlights a lot of the principles that I've been talking about, both offensively and defensively. First, it starts with Lexington pushing the near side wing back up the field. But as the Lexington center back starts getting pressured, Lexington center mid number 22 swaps to the other center mid number 8 and comes out wide, filling in for the wing back and opening up a passing option. When the ball gets played to number 22, the Hailstrom defender, who was marking number 8 initially, is forced to press. However, because the press is now coming from the inside because of the switch off, number 22's passing lane to number 7 Jalen James is now open. This again highlights the benefits of using a center mid to fill in this space for an advanced wing back, as well as how general movement and rotation amongst your players can open up different angles and passing lanes. Now let's take a look at Jalen James and his position in receiving this ball. Because he's sitting in that massive gap between the Hailstorm defensive and midfield lines, he has all the time and space to look up and find that pass to Atez Diouf. This is a problem I've talked a lot about with regards to Lexington, but the Hailstorm here show how it can be exploited. With James starting level with the back line and checking back into that space for the ball, I honestly thought that the Hailstorm center defensive mid should be the one shifting over um, when he sees Lexington center mid Delamini get forced wide, but he probably wouldn't have made it to James anyways. James being open in that space forces the Hailstrom defender to step up to him, which then opens up that lane behind him for the through pass to Diouf. Again, having so much space between your back line and midfield line is dangerous, as when opponents can get that ball in that space, it forces commitment from your defenders and thus creates open space behind them for the opposition to exploit. And finally, James plays this beautiful pass to Duf, who is one of the few Lexington players sitting on the Northern Colorado back line, and Duf is able to run through on goal. Lexington's always tried to sit players on the opponent back line, often pushing up wingers and wingbacks from both sides, as well as the two forwards. The benefits of Lexington having so many players sitting on the opponent's back line is that A, some teams will be scared and drop some players back, opening up more space in the middle, and B, if you can get players on the ball in front of the back line, like James here, then you can play some dangerous through passes on the ground or over the top that players can run onto. With so many players in position, you're almost bound to have an angle that works. Usually, Lexington doesn't really go for this that much, often trying to play through the wings instead, either building up with the wide players or trying to hit a long ball from a center back to a winger, and then trying to get a cross off. However, they haven't really been that successful with this, as they struggle to get into crossing position, and usually their cross quality isn't great. And even if it is, they don't really have the aerial threads up front to get on the ends of those balls. What they do have though is pace up front, with the likes of Diouf, Nico Brown, Tate Robertson, etc, who can run after those through passes and be more direct on goal. Thus, I think Lexington should try and focus their attack through these more central areas, getting their players on the ball between the lines and feeding it through a pass to a quick forward player. This proved to work again with Lexington's second goal, where Machel is able to get the ball in the middle, in space in front of the opposition back line, and deliver a beauty to Diouf, who again slots at home. I've noticed over a few games that Matril really likes being in these positions, creating offense between the lines in these kinds of half spaces. And he's really dangerous here too, as evidenced by his free kick at the end of the game that arguably should have been Dio's hat trick. This is probably the most dangerous I've seen Lexington so far in this USL League One campaign, and I think they should try to get themselves in these types of positions more in future games. Along those lines, as I was watching this game, I couldn't help but think that with the way that Lexington plays, that they could try a little formation change. Instead of using the standard 4-4-2 that they've been using all year, I think switching to a 3-5-2 could offer them more balance while still allowing them to do what they want to do. You still have a lot of men forward, so you can continue to overload the opposition's back line, but the key is that you also can do this without sacrificing defensive integrity. 
You can push your wingers high if you want, but if you're trying to hold on to a lead, you have the flexibility to drop them back into sort of a back five. Additionally, you have three in the midfield, which has both offensive and defensive benefits. Defensively, you can have one or two defensively focused midfielders who can better protect your back line and offer depth to your midfield line to help clog the space between the lines that I always talk about. Think about a Rodri from Manchester City or a Casemiro from Manchester United. Offensively, you have more options and angles centrally in the buildup. For example, if you play Machel as an attacking midfielder, you can relieve him of some of his defensive duties to better get him into those attacking half spaces to utilize his strengths in delivering those passes over the back line for one of your attackers to run onto. The main drawbacks of the 3-5-2 formation are its reliance on wingbacks as well as its vulnerabilities to overloads in the wide areas. However, Lexington already relies heavily on their wingbacks, both offensively and defensively, and I think that they're some of the better players on the team. I'm not sure when Tariq Muhammad can come back from injury, but Owen Green and Tate Robinson have both played very well for Lexington, and I think switching to this formation allows them to continue to do what they've been doing, but with more defensive solidity behind them. And regarding the 3-5-2's vulnerability to overloads in the wide areas, in what I've seen, very few USL League One teams really overload wide areas or can consistently take advantage of those overloads. And even so, some of Lexington's center backs have shown to be all right in 1v1 situations in space. For these reasons, I think a switch of formation would be an interesting idea for Lexington to look at. In total, I think this game was a good result for Lexington. They still have some structural defensive woes that are holding them back, but offensively, they're starting to be more dangerous. Now, it's just a matter of how well they can manufacture and get into those dangerous positions and start putting goals in the back of the net. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of Lexington's performance down in the comments below, and I'll see you all soon.